Hey guys, welcome back to another one of my attempts at deductive logic. I don't know if this is actually going to work, but I've taken this into several mechanics and nobody's been able to figure out what the issue is. Basically, this car sounds like a tin can going down the road. It sounds like the wheel's about to fall off of it. And uh, I don't feel safe having my wife drive our kids around in a car that sounds this way, even though I've had several mechanics look at it. And the, the answer I sometimes get is, well, we have to wait for the problem to get worse before we can figure out what it is. Um, I have a tendency to procrastinate and sit there and watch and listen to things until I can figure out what's wrong with it. And I've come to a conclusion um, just from my own tinkering and kind of wandering around and looking at it from underneath and thinking about it and staring at it, that it is the sway bar end links that are making this noise. So I'm going to try and replace the sway bar end links. Now this could just be me being cheap and not wanting to pay for a mechanic to look at it again. But I think that this is going to work. It's only $30 in parts to replace both sides. And if I'm correct, I'll solve my noise problem and make the car a lot safer. So we're just gonna go with it. It's non-returnable now because they broke the box. Um, I believe these are the right parts for my car. This is what it came up on the computer when I went in there. Okay, so some of you are probably wondering what the heck is a sway bar and how did you come up with this conclusion? So I'm just gonna explain it to you real quick. The sway bar goes underneath the car. Uh, it shouldn't move, it should be pretty solid. It attaches to the frame of the car. These can also go bad, but I didn't get any of those. So I'm not doing those today. Um, the end link is up in here. And this one has just a little bit of play in it. But when these start to go bad, um, they'll make a lot of noise and ruckus. And then eventually what will happen is they'll just fall apart. And when they fall apart, uh, your sway bar could come loose and start hitting things under here. You could have a bolt hang down and puncture a hole in your tire. You can have something scrape up against a wheel and cause sparks. Lots of things can go wrong if this falls off. So today what we're gonna do is we're just going to remove the old one and put a new one on on each side and then take this for a test drive and see if my deductive logic actually worked or who knows but I watched a guy on uh, YouTube do one of these this morning he said it was a really easy job and then he made the entire process look extremely brutal and painful I'm hoping I don't have this experience so my initial response to this uh, experience if I were to give you a little bit of feedback on how this is going it is unscrewing slowly but surely um, it is definitely a pain in the butt it's very tough and I think next time I'm going to put some coil oil on the top bolt when I go to the other side but since I'm already down here manhandling this thing I'm just going to keep doing Okay, so here's the old sway bar uh, end, and you can kind of see these just get worn down over time. Here's a new one. Pretty much the same thing, just this one looks a little fancier. I don't know why. But I'm going to go ahead and remove the other side because I can't get this one up under there and I don't want to have to jack this up. Now the old sway bars uh, were 9 16 the new ones are 8 5 8 See the size difference there a little bit. Okay, so I have my uh, sway bar uh, ends off on each side and I can move the sway bar. It kind of... Uh, I don't really like how easily that's moving in the bushings. Where is it? I'm just going to 
pull these pieces off. And then put the pieces back, reassemble. Okay, so the funnest part of this entire project for me was getting that bolt back on top because without compression, just doesn't want to quite reach through up there. So uh, that was fun. Okay, so I've taken this thing on a test drive for about a thousand miles since I did this repair. The, um, the we we did the repair right before we drove to Pennsylvania and back, so about 800 miles or so. And um, no noises. It seems to be doing really well. A lot of people uh, online. There's a lot of confusion to me about how to tighten those um, those ends down because. You can barely fit the bolt on there when you put it on. You have to tighten it to a certain amount of compression. And I think, you know, for, for a certain extent of it, it's, um, it's preference. The tighter that you make those sway bar ends, the less the sway bar is going to move and um, the less time it takes for the sway bar reaction in the car. So um, you want them pretty tight. I tighten them down. Um, Tell you can see about three quarters to a, uh, an inch of thread on top. Um, now, the the other thing you don't want to do is over tighten them because that'll put too much uh, tension on the the sway bar uh, brackets underneath the car. So it's kind of one of those things where you want it tight, but you're not too tight. Uh, as I tightened it down, what I was looking at was compression of those uh, rubber washers, and I wanted to make sure that they were being compressed. And, and each, all four of the rubber washers on either side were, um, were being compressed a little bit, but not too much, just so that I could see the tension on there. And uh, it seems to have worked fine. It's a quiet car. Now I don't feel so bad driving across a parking lot and everybody hearing you go clank, clank. 